Carlos Nelson with Cascade Sports, and this is a continuation on our series, Bridging the Gap Between Sports and Education. And we have focused on a lot of our local athletes that have made good uh, by playing sports, uh, football and basketball. Uh, we, we have a former basketball star here who is assistant coach. Who do we have here? Uh, Keith Wendell. You know, I'm right now I'm assistant coach at uh, St. Petersburg College. We're D1 Juco uh, down here in Florida. All right. Hey, need I tell you to run it down from kindergarten, bro? No, nah, no, nah, I got you. I got you. So, you know, I didn't start playing competitive basketball or organization basketball until I was in like fifth grade. Uh, you know, single mom uh, raised by her, me, her and my grandma. Uh, my grandma is actually a Jehovah Witness, so a lot of people don't understand their culture and what they come from. Like, they don't really believe in sports. Um, they actually believe in kind of hanging out with those that support you, as in a Jehovah Witness. Uh, so I didn't really get into organized basketball until, like, fifth grade. Uh, so when I got into it, I played what we call hoop it up back at, back at home in Wichita, Kansas. And... If anybody's familiar with uh, Lynette Woodard. Uh, that's my that's my girl, man. Yeah, man. That's my so girl. She got a big time center when I was growing up and it's still there. Uh, I don't know if it's getting used as much as it was when I was growing up, but everybody used to play there. Uh, so I started off there in fifth grade and then going into sixth grade, I got introduced to Biddy basketball. Uh, played with a team called the Rising Stars. Uh, played for about two years until I played uh, middle school basketball. Cut you off for a minute. I want you to mention your coaches. Okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Um, my coach, his name was Ryan. He's a, uh, his son played on the team. Uh, good guy. Good guy. Uh, was all about his kids. Knew the game, and he was, you know, well-respected. Uh, so took took a lot from him uh, as far as, you know, helping out the kids that didn't have much uh, and needed that type of support. Uh, so played for him for, like I said, about a year and a half and then went on to um, middle school. Um, what Will positions Justin, was you playing also? Tell the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played, yeah, I played point guard. Um, I actually played. Back then, it wasn't called a combo. You know, either you was a shooting guard or a point guard back then, you know, but I had the ability to do both. Um, so I played off the ball a lot, and then when the game got into crunch time, I played on the ball. Um, so going into – we'll go to AAU first before I jump to, you know, uh, middle school competitive basketball. I played – I started off with a guy by the name of Tyrone Berry. And if anybody's in Wichita, Kansas, they probably know who Tyrone is. Uh, we started off by the name of Team Kansas. Uh, good group of good group of guys that I played with. Uh, it, I guess the best players in Wichita, when I was going up, played for Team Kansas. So, for instance, Todd Gray played at OU. Uh, Brandon Polk played at Butler University right before they went to the Nationals two years in a row. Um, and then like uh, Dupree Lucas that played at Bingleton University. Dupree Lucas, their brothers, played at uh, Xavier, then went on and played at Portland State and went to the uh, tournament and they lost to Kansas in the first round. So uh, playing behind those guys and watching them you know, play and getting that opportunity to wait your turn, uh, it it was big. It was a it was a big key, and you know. I want to cut you off, uh, Coach. Go ahead. Talk about because you talked about waiting your turn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of kids think that just because you're a senior, or just because you're a freshman, that you're supposed to play. You know, uh, I guess that is the generation that is going on now. Uh, well, back then, there was a learning curve. You know, even if you were that, you know, that guy as a freshman, 
that don't mean you that guy when you're stepping on with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So back then it was always good to, you know, to wait your turn. It's just like it's just like it is in the NBA. You know, you got five-star McDonald's All-Americans. And if you're not top 10 pick, nine times out of 10, you're going to be waiting your turn. You know, it's going to take you a couple years before you learn the system and get it down where you can play at that pace in the league. And, it, and it's the same thing for high school when I was growing up. Uh, so being able to wait my turn and just kind of watch those guys in front of me and learn from them, uh, that did uh, – that played a big part on my, my outcome of my career. Uh, so after I got finished playing with Tyrone Berry, I played for Tyrone for maybe two years. I think we played for two years. And then, you know, I branched out and I played by played with a guy by the name of Terry Moore, uh, the diaper dance, as he, as he calls it. Uh, Terry Moore, solid guy, stand-up guy, uh, played a big part of – basically kind of reaching out and getting us to a different spot, like getting us to see different things. You know, with Tyrone, it wasn't really a lot of money involved, so we kind of stayed locally. And I think Terry was the first one in my career that we kind of went out and played other competitions. So it was like, oh, well. Little traveling. Yeah, these kids in uh, Oklahoma or these kids in Arkansas, New York, oh, they, they good. They just as good as I am. So being able to see that at a young age was was very good. And so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he was there for basketball. But me being my mom, being a single parent, you know, uh, she always made it to the game. She was one of those. that I'm going to be the one that's driving. I'll help out with kids. You know, she was that type of mom. So him stepping in and playing a little bit of a father figure, you know, I only played with Coach Moore for a summer. So just getting that experience, you know, of just having a male figure around, you know, that, How important, that was important. Yeah, that, that is real important. You remember off camera I talked to you, I said some of these young athletes be yes. boohooing about, well, my mom and dad and this and that, like, they the only ones ever grew up. Uh, how much respect do you have for the mothers uh, as as a coach and think about as a player what uh, coming out of our community, these single family, uh, the sacrifices moms makes for uh, a lot of these kids. And do you think that they really understand that at the time that that's going on? Right. You look back in hindsight. You know, at the time, I really appreciate, I really appreciated my mom. You know, even though I didn't totally understand it, when I look back at it now, I'm like, dang, she was my mom, my dad, you know, she she was everything. And at the time, it's like you need something more. It's like, dang, something is missing at the time. But now that I look back at it, it wasn't nothing was missing. She was really all I needed. Covered you know, all them bases, baby boy. All the bases, <laughs> all the bases. And she was really all I needed, you know, when I look back at it. But it is it is important for some type of male figure to be in your life because mom can do all that she can, but there is no replacement for a male figure in your life. Um, so for all the guys, and I'll speak on them, you know, all the guys that played a big role for me, the Terry Morris, the, uh, the Ed Morris, uh, which was my um, which was my AAU coach. The um, I called him Ed Morris. I'm sorry. We just always call him Ed. Uh, the Bob Loves uh, that played a big role. And, uh, you know, my high school coach, Chris Davis, played a big role in my life as well. So all those guys, I took something from them. You know, it wasn't just taking a whole personality from somebody. You take a little bit from each of those and then you make yourself as a man. Uh, so all those guys played a big role into, you know, the person that I am. Um, and being that I didn't have a father figure, 
for them to step up and play some type of role in my life, you know, I definitely appreciate appreciate those guys. So uh, let's talk about that uh, high school career. Okay, um, man, freshman year. Well, let's backtrack a little bit. I'll get to the high school. So right. um, after playing with um, Coach Moore, I jumped on another team, Kansas group. And it was ninth, It was going into my 10th grade year. So those some of those guys are my best friends right now. Like, we travel all over the world. I actually got an offer from um, Team Griffin, my – junior year to play on the circuit and I turned it down just so I could keep playing with those guys um so we won nationals you know we played together for you know three strong years Clamotery had a good group of guys like I said we matter of fact my best friend just got married not too long ago uh so those type of guys uh were big in in life as well so just having, you know, some kids like to go play with the best group of guys, you know, well, with us, we wanted the best competition. You know, we didn't want to branch out and play with everybody. You know, we wanted to stick together and kind of see, you know, what was up. So um, play with those guys. Then going into freshman year, um, started varsity. Uh, I played I played JV as well as you know. Tell them where you was at at, at Wichita because you Wichita, got Wichita right. South Wichita South High School. Uh, started varsity, and it's crazy because the game I started varsity was against the number one team in the state, and it was awful. <laughs> I was shaking in my boots. You know <laughs> they had some they had some high major guys on that team, um, so. The outcome really weren't it, – it wasn't that good, you know. And it was a learning curve, though, you know, because uh, at the time, you know, as we talked about waiting your turn, I, I didn't have that opportunity. You know, at the high school level, at the AAU level, yes, I got a chance to see those guys in action. But at the high school level, I didn't have an opportunity to wait my turn. I got through in the fire immediately. You know, obviously with uh, – I guess you can balance, you know, how you can play – so many quarters of JV and so many quarters of varsity, which I did that, but my majority quarters were varsity. Um, so play, play varsity my freshman year. My sophomore year is really when I stepped into the limelight. Um, it was my team then. Uh, what was the coach saying to you when you came back? Oh, man, I got the green light. Here, here's the keys to the kingdom. I got the green light and anybody that knows me knows that me and my coach, we hold a strong relationship. Uh, they always used to tease me, you know, oh, you the coach's pad and now nah, I'm just nice. And he gave me the keys to the kingdom. That's all that is. So, uh, but, you know, really respecting him for that, for uh, putting me in that type of situation. Uh, it made me a better leader and a better person. I, that's so what I was going to ask you. How much uh, when when he gave you the keys of the kingdom that you feel that you had to mature? Oh, I had to mature right off the bat. It was no doubt about it. Uh, I was the I was the guy on the team, and you know I had you know eleven other guys looking to me for direction, and even if they were seniors or you know juniors, they knew you know who mm -hmm. who was the captain, and you know. Uh, my coach, he loved his seniors, you know, definitely loved them, put them in a great position. But at the end of the day, you know, we kind of led where I would take the team. And uh, that that made me a better person. Uh, it made me a better leader. Uh, and just like I said, a better all around person today. So sophomore year was OK. We were, you know, up and down team uh, junior year is really when I kind of blossom my game. Um, I hated weights. I always was a little guy. I'm still a little guy. I'm six foot 160. You know, I always was little. So I never really took that jump. And, you know, I'll explain it when I go to the college level, like that took an effect on my body. But at the high school level, I didn't feel like I needed it. 
Was you, you slashing? Know, was you silk? You wasn't rough and ready. You were silky smooth. Allen, I- Allen Iverson and Trace McGrady were my favorite players back then. All right. Um, and then as I got older, I started to realize that Kobe Bryant was that guy, you know. So back then, I had the Allen Iverson swag. You know, uh, I'm slashing handles, crossover, you know, three pointers, you know, and all that. I was never crazy athletic. Um, but did I got you go to the hard court. in the paint, or did you tiptoe through the two loops? No, no, it wasn't back then when I played in the era that I played in. Um, you had to go hard, you know, it was no nights off, it was no days off. If you didn't bring it, you will get exposed. Uh, so I had to bring it every night. Uh, like I said, so fast forward to my junior year, AAU wise, that's when we won nationals. And I'm talking about we had to play, it was on a Saturday, we had to play seven games to make it to Sunday, to the championship game. It was back then, when MA when MAYB really first started and it was really booming. Um, so coming into my junior year, it was just really high expectations for me uh, and the program. I had a little point guard by my side by the name of Cordero Nawaji. Uh, which is one of my good friends to this day. Um, And at the time, we played two guards. You know, so for the most part, you know, I shared the limelight a a little bit, not a lot, but I shared it with him. Um, And he was, he was the person that made me like defense. I hated defense. I was always a scoring person. And, um, when it came to him, he was a dog on the defensive end. So that's why I love playing with him. Didn't want uh, him on you, huh? Oh, absolutely not. It was times in practice where I would just go crazy. And coaches, even though he was starting, Cordero guard, guard kick. And it would just be a battle. You know, uh, that absolutely made me better as a player. Um, so junior year, um, there was a guy like I spoke in the past about um, – Capri Lucas, one of my good friends, he was the guy in the state of Kansas his senior year. So me and him would play one-on-one every Saturday. I lived across the street from a a park. So we would play every Saturday. And I promise you, I never beat him, (laughs) ever. I never beat him. He always beat me. And he made me a better player going into my senior year. Uh, so junior year, I was all city, um, didn't make all state. I made honorable mention, actually all state, uh, then going into my senior year, then every, my name rung out. Everybody knew who I was. Uh, so I think I might, my junior year, I think I averaged like 18, 19 points. And then my senior year is when I really took off. Um, I think we made it to the first round of playoffs and we got beat by, I think they were like the number two team in the state. Um, so it was just, it was just a good learning experience, you know, uh, excuse me, being able to play at a high level in high school and being able to play against some of your best friends, uh, and being able to step right into the limelight and play as a freshman all the way into a senior. So that, that was good for me. What, uh, how did you determine what college you was going to go to? You know what? Um, there was a guy that coached at my high school. And he's a legend. He is, when I, he is the definition of a legend. Uh, Coach Eck. Uh, he coached at my high school. Then he coached at Redlands High School. Won a national championship at Division II. And then that next year, they went runner-up. At, uh, when they transferred over to Division One JUCO. Um, I was the first person that was considered the best player in the city lead to not go play for him. I actually went to go play at Hutch Community College, uh, which is where our junior college nationals are held. At. So um, I look, I took a visit to Hutch. I loved it. At the time, they was pre, they was ranked number three in the country. They had some really good players there. They had a kid that went straight from 
JUCO to play professional basketball. They had a couple D1 guys. So I when I went there, that vibe, I loved that vibe that I was getting. What was the educational challenges? Cascade Sports is home with a student athlete. And uh, a lot of the uh, players in this series uh, went to JUCO. And we talk about that a little bit. A lot of, a lot of <laughs> these young high schoolers, they think you just jump into Division One. No, not at all. And I actually got a rude awakening. I never, and I can be honest with you, I hated school. Even in high school, I always just did the bare minimum because I thought basketball was going to take me so far. So when I got to college, I literally almost flunked out twice at the JUCO level because where I was at, it was about winning to the team. Anybody that knows Hush Community College knows that they breed winners. They want to win national championships. They want to win conference championships. Um, so at that time, I didn't really do too well in school. Like I said, I just wanted to play basketball. And I never really had someone until I got to my four year that made me understand that you need to do more than just play basketball. So junior college, my freshman year, almost flunked out, had to go to summer school. And then all the schools that were recruiting me disappeared. And I had mid-majors to high-level schools recruiting me. And they all just went away. Tell so, them why. Because, look, it's – it's a million people in the world trying to do what I was doing at the time. And the first is two questions I asked when I recruit a kid. One is what type of person is he? Is he a good kid? How does he handle himself off the court, on the court? Do you have any disciplinary, you know, issues with the kid? The second question I always ask is what are his grades like? So I passed the test. The first question. When they got to that second question and they asked for the transcripts and they seen a whole bunch of D's, F's, and C's, they like, oh, coach, we can't do nothing with him. He might be a good player, but he can't, he can't get into our school. See, every school has a criteria. You know, you can be the best in the world, but if you don't have the right criteria to get in Duke, you're not going to Duke. Hey, 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 coach, also – Tell tell these young high school kids, them teachers don't care what team you on. They oh, no, fail absolutely. you. <laughs> absolutely. They don't uh, care if you're bringing a billion dollars to the school. You know what? It's funny because my, be my mad. boss. <laughs> it's funny because my boss right now, he's a teacher at our school. And he has failed some of our basketball players before. <laughs> like, you got to put in the work. I don't care if you're on my team, if you're my player. If you're not my player, uh, you got to put in the work. So for the for anybody that's listening, if uh, if your college coach that you're taking his class can fail you, how do you think a random teacher is going to feel when you're not putting in the work? You know, we tell we tell our teachers all the time, you know, they do a good job of trying to help students. But we tell them he get what he deserves. Right, because mm -hmm. mo most programs, they're going to have tutoring for you and this and that. You got you to gotta put Absolutely. the effort out. You got you to put the work in. You got to put the work in. And, uh, you know, fast forward to my my going into my junior year at a Division two called Pittsburgh State, which uh, I had a great coach by the name of Gene Iba. Uh, any, anybody from the basketball world knows who the Iba family is. If you watch the Glory Road, they were spoken the Glory Road, uh, the Iba Arena, Oklahoma State, where they play basketball, is named after my coach's grandfather. So uh, he was a he was a, a good good coach, a good man, and he was the first person that looked me dead in my eye after he looked at my transcript and said, "If you don't make your grades, you will not play on this team." He was the first person that ever told me that. So that was a wake up call. Like, you gonna take basketball away from me? You know, the only thing I love. So I 
actually did good in school. I applied myself. You know, that's all it takes is a little, a little for you guys, for people to apply themselves and to, to do the work and believe in themselves. Because a, a lot of kids look at things and like, oh, man, I, I can't do that off back. Oh, well, I got a, a boss that I work for that has set all Americans down because they're not getting it done in the classroom. And 10 times out of 10, those kids turn it around just like that. Once you take something that somebody loves away from them, it shows them as a person to themselves that they can do it. So once he told me that, I'm like, all right, Keith, uh, it's time to hit the books. It's time to go to tutoring sessions. It's time to be coherent when you're in study hall. Like in junior college, I didn't do that. In study hall, I was on a computer messing around. I was on Facebook at the time. Uh, you know, I was on MySpace <laughs> at the time. But when I got to four years, really when I buckled down on my academics, because at some point in time, the basketball was going to stop bouncing. And I had to make sure I had that piece of paper because my mom did not sacrifice all that she sacrificed for me to leave school without the piece of paper. And I was actually blessed. After my four years of playing, my coach rung me into the office and said, you got one year to get whatever degree you need to get and get it and get out of here. So that was a blessing. Uh, it is not too many coaches that, you know, that, that will pay for a year of college after you're done playing, unless you're in grad school. You know, all I did was go to school, work, and that's it. Well, that's what this program is about, bridging that gap uh, between sports and education. And I think you uh, laid it out, uh, what your mindset was. Uh, what your environment was and uh, how uh, it has served you to this point by being flexible, uh, by being appreciative and by almost like knowing your lane. As I tell uh, a lot of the young athletes and ask the, the coaches and people that have gone through what you've gone through that you think you this and that, but when you go to these schools and you you leave this little place that you at, they got champions that's coming from all over the country. Don't care nothing about how good you are. Right, right. It, it's gonna it's gonna be competitive, and and that's the nature of the beast. And if you shy away from the nature of the beast, you're not gonna be very good when it comes to high school basketball, college basketball. You know, if you're lucky enough to go on and play professional basketball. Uh, so that is the nature of the beast of being competitive. And like I said, there's million players all over the world trying to do what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. And at the time, yes, you might have a relationship with that person, but in the back of that kid's mind, he's thinking, man, I got to take this kid's spot because I got, I got aspirations and goals to get to just like him. So when I was raised and growing up, it was always a dog fight. Even from playing with my best friends, we fought on the court in practice. I'm talking about fist fights because we were so competitive. We all had the same goals in life, but everybody's path was a little bit different. All right, I'm, I'm switching up now because okay. we did interview one of your teammates, but Given the fact that this is bridging the gap between sports and education, name five of them guys that you were uh, balling with out of high school, JUCO, or whatever, that, that possibly got degrees, uh, and how that changed their life. Uh, my first one, and my first couple are all my best friends. So Mick, Mick Love, he played at Wichita Hikes, and his story is, a, is, a, is unique. Like, he played college basketball, and an accident took it away from him. Um, so he was driving, hit a, a pole, and he couldn't play anymore. And he was only, I think that happened his freshman year. So with him, 
it was, and he's always been like the smart one. You know how you have your click and you got your the smart egghead. You one got, of them is the egghead. Always. So he he's he was the he was basically the genius of our group. And um he went on to get a bachelor's, went on to get a master's. Uh now he's giving back to uh his community. He just moved to Arizona, so he's living a good life. Um Another one is his cousin by the name of Reggie Love that he went on to uh, play junior college basketball at uh, Pratt Community College and then went on to play at Bartman Community College and then played four years at uh, Kingsville, no, Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, uh, which is a uh, division one right now. Um, and he got his bachelor's degree. He actually took a break. And then once he found out that I needed a bachelor's degree to get these jobs that I'm trying to get, you know, he decided to go back to Wichita State and get his degree. Um, a guy by the name of A.J. Martin that went to Southeast High School that played at Barton as well. Um, he started school, um, didn't finish, but doing he's doing good for himself. He's at an insurance. He's an insurance person and does claims. And uh, he has two kids and he's doing one kid, sorry, and doing well for himself. Man, those, I mean, I know I can name a lot of right. a lot of people, but those three, those are my foundation. You know, uh, and having those guys in my life to push me, because they'll tell you, I actually just finished my master's maybe last summer or it might have been two summers ago. And when I told them I was starting it, they like, no way. You? getting your master's you hate school you know um so and it's crazy that how life works a full circle because like i stated before i hated school the position that i am in right now besides basketball because i also have an on-campus job at the college i am a head advisor for a trio program and if anybody don't know what trio program is that is a government funded program within the college that's there to support you. So I run my own campus. So I have 82 kids on my campus that look to me for guidance. And the majority of those kids are first generation students. And if anybody don't know what first generation is, that means your, your biological parents, your mom or dad, they do not have a bachelor's degree. They might have an AA and experienced a little bit of college, but they did not go and get their bachelor's degree. So I'm dealing with a lot of kids that really don't have any guidance when it comes to academics and, you know, getting the right answers that they need. They the and first. That support. Yeah, that support system, man. They, they don't have that there. A lot of people in their family did not go to college. So being able to look back of me not really caring about school to God put me in a position to help other students and other people, you know, it, it, it's really a blessing. It's well, definitely a blessing to me. Well, you know, we talked about, uh, I said, when I bring my coaches on these shows, automatically I'm like, we ask them to join the City of Fountain Coaches Association because, uh, these are the type of issues and conversations that we uh, uh, from the diaspora uh, have to look for uh, individuals like yourself and hear your story, not somebody telling your story, right, right. Uh, you telling your story. And that's what this is, a, is about. In closing, what closing comments would you have to our audience? Uh, two things I usually say. What would you tell a young high school freshman and what would you tell them in regards to JUCO and uh, what advice would you give uh, uh, them as a relationship if they want to be a coach? Because well, coaches, the, you, you, you know how yeah. when you're coming up, you emulate. Right. Well, the first thing I would tell them is you don't know everything. That, that would be the first thing I tell a high school kid. It's so many people that put 
something into those kids that give them the type of demeanor that they know it all. And, you know, so that would be the first thing. The second thing I would tell them is to, it's not all about basketball. Uh, it's about life, learning the circle of life. So, yes, you might play basketball, but you're using basketball and everything that as that is involved with basketball to understand life, right? Uh, so don't just take a coach's message and just think that he's talking about basketball because nine times out of ten, he's talking – it's more deeper than you think it is. He's talking about, you know, being a, a good teammate. Well, to be a good teammate, you got to go out in the work field. You're going to have to work with somebody else. And, and just different things like that. So try to understand – where a coach is coming from and understand that a coach is not always after you as a fact as like somebody trying to attack you like just because you're getting criticized doesn't mean there's a message in that you know a lot of kids especially i don't i hate to say just this generation but they're so defensive so if i getting on a kid and I'm going to yell at you. I got players in the pros that I coached that I yelled at. So if you don't think I'm going to yell at you, then <laughs> we got another thing coming. So, you know, not taking it personal when someone's getting on you and don't take how the message is given, but listen and take the message from it. A lot of kids, all they hear is the yell, but they don't, tone out the yelling and try to take that message. You know, like today uh, in practice, I got on the kid. He didn't close. He closed out. Well, he helped to recover and then closed out on the kid, but didn't leave his feet to contest the shot. And I got on. And he immediately responded back. He said something. I don't remember what he said, but it was just like, you didn't take the message from what I said. And I'm the type of coach that I will yell at you, but then turn around and give you a hug and let you know why I yelled at you. You know, so taking that from a coach is big. And I didn't learn that until my, my junior, my senior year in college. Tell me this, and what did that do uh, uh, lifting that veil? It did, a, it, it, it did a lot because so many of, of us, as a speaking as our culture, we are so defensive when it comes to, like I said, either taking criticism or when someone is just speaking about you. We are so quick to jump the gun of what you think they're saying instead of what they really were trying to say. So that gave me a big lesson when it came to, not just on the basketball court, but in life, like I got a fiance right now. She gets on me all the time. And it's like, dude, she's gonna get on you. That, that, that's your fiance, you know, or that's your wife. That's what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to make you a better person. And that's, I didn't get that. If they didn't when care, they wouldn't say me. nothing. Right, exactly. I didn't get that when coaches got on me. I'm like, dude, he just harping the heart sometimes, you know. But at the end of the day, he was trying to make you a better person. He was trying to challenge you. Because if you don't get challenged in life, you're not going to move up any lap. You're just going to kind of stay where you're at. And you're just going to keep moving side and side instead of going up. So... That will be, you know, one of the big things I say to the high school students, student athletes. Now, the college athletes, because they, all of them, absolutely think they know it all when they get there, especially in the junior college level. Um, I would tell them that get your grades. That is the most important thing when it comes to college basketball. 
because you cannot move to an NAIA, a Division II, a Division I without your academics. You know, now it might be some curves here and there that you can get around, but at the end of the day, you need that piece of paper for life and for yourself. You want to know that, yeah, it was hard, but I stuck it out. I think college prepares you for life. College basketball prepares you for life. And if you can get past that part of the running, the waking up at five in the morning, the film study, uh, when you get to the division one and division two levels, if you're small, you know, you got to eat this certain amount of food every day and you're on a strict diet. If you can get past that part, then you're ready for life because there's, there's so many lessons in the game of basketball that it's countless of them. I can't even, I can't even count how many lessons that I have learned from the game. Uh, and it's helping me to today to pass it on to, you know, the players that I teach or the players that still reach out to me, you know, even if they're playing pro, they're still learning. You know, I would tell a college athlete, never stop learning because I'm 35 and I'm still learning. You know, my coach, my boss is in his 50s and he's still learning. You know, there is never a space in your life where you should feel like that you learn all that you can learn. And if you have, it's time to move on. You know, it's time to look for something new. I will tell anybody, don't be scared to make a transition, a new transition. You know, um, with me, I used to coach at uh, a prep school. And I was like, I was content with the prep school. You know, I get the kids in, I get them out. That made me look good. That made me feel good. But when it was time, when I felt like, okay, it's time. You know, I, I did, I made this place a better place than when I came in. Always leave a place better than when you came in. So I, I thought I did that. So it was time to move on and time to make a new adventure of life. Uh, so, like I said, where it ended me at, where I'm at now. And I don't think I will never get to a point where I feel like I've learned all I can, especially when you're coaching under a Hall of Famer. You know, my coach is in the Hall of Fame. He's in the JUCO Hall of Fame and the Florida Hall of Fame. So there's countless amount of lessons that I can still learn from him. He's, he's my biggest mentor right now. Uh, in the six years, I've learned so much as becoming a man. I'm still learning. You know, a lot of college kids, oh, I'm 18, I'm 19, I'm a man. <laughs> nah, you, you, you're definitely not there yet. You know, you, you're, you're learning to be a man, but you're, you're not there yet. So that will be my biggest thing to when it comes to a college student. Take the lessons a coach give you. You know, it's not, he doesn't hate you. I'm pretty sure if he hated you, he wouldn't recruit you, you know, uh, and learn those lessons, take those lessons in and then turn them into your own lessons. Okay. Uh, don't copyright somebody, you know, take a little piece of from whatever thing that you're learning and then you turn that into your own big lesson. And you use that on down the road. When, it, when it's showtime to step in and teach somebody, or if you get a supervising job, when it's your turn to lead somebody, you, you, you already have that foundation and you took the time to learn instead of just hearing what somebody says. Listening is a lost art when it comes to college basketball or, or when it comes to life, period. A lot of people hear what you say but they don't really listen to what you say. So learning how to listen and really take that in is something that, you know, I strive to teach every day, you know, in my life and uh, as I'm coaching as well. Well, I would say this, 
it was a pleasure having you on the show. I think you hit on a lot of points that uh, can shed some light on a underclassman uh, in college and in uh, high school. Uh, hopefully uh, you have a uh, good uh, season this season. And uh, as we always say, when you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself. And we top that off with Cascade Sports. We go hard in the paint. And I mean, we go hard. This program is brought to you by the City of Fountains Coaches Association.